It's been 945 days since a one Sir Lewis Hamilton. 900? Felt the sweet taste of victory. I didn't think he'd ever win again. We can say watching this in person, live, with the crowd at Silverstone, the goosebumps were all over. Didn't I just say Silverstone? No, you said Silverstone. That's how they say it. No, it's not. Silverstone, the goosebumps were all over. Let's get into an epic review or recap of the British Grand Prix. Mike, hit the music. They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1, coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. I can't believe that the last time before this race, Lewis won in 2021 at Saudi Arabia. That's because uh, the Mercedes sucked, and it still sucks, but it's better. It's a lot better. I don't want to say it's a lot better, but it's just better. They Because everyone's so close this year because the Red Bull decided to use the uh, Mercedes design instead of keeping their last year car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but also, have you noticed that since Adrian Newey has announced that he's leaving, yeah, and that they, <laughs> and that they told him, like, you don't have to come to these meetings anymore. You, you know, you kind of on holiday. Everything is kind of falling on the wayside. I'm, I'm starting to think Newey might go to Aston Martin. I'm starting to think Newey might go to Williams. Nah, I ain't going to go to Williams. They ain't, they ain't got no money. Their facilities are 20 years old. It doesn't matter. He doesn't need the money. But if you go to Aston Martin, you have a brand new factory with a brand new wind tunnel coming online with everything's brand new. Um, the owner has no problem writing big fat checks. They're going to pay him $25 million a year wherever he goes. Maybe more. Shit, I think Ferrari offered him $50 million a year. Let's talk about one Sir Lewis Hamilton. This was a master class of mixed condition, of controlling your pace, of con- leaving something left in your tires because at the end stint, he was on softs. Mercedes, for once, and I got to give it to him, for once, because we always talk about when people mess up the strategies and we're always harping on the strategies, they were flawless. They did the double stack flawless. Everything they did worked out and what i also love is lewis took control they at you want to come in and bring put on the inners what did he say mike no why did he say no mike because they weren't ready but they put checo on inners they put leclerc on inners and just basically destroyed the race well they 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 did the inners because they thought the rain was going to come and then the rain didn't come it slowed down it was like they were they made a prediction and they they predict the the, I guess the rain just slowed down because it said on their computer that the rain's coming on, on this minute. Right. And it came th- five minutes later, which was too late because you do two laps on inners um, in a, in a, on a dry track, even a little bit of a wet track, and you run them off in two laps. I mean, that's how fast they, they run off the car. And then they had to go back to the pits, put on slicks, then it rained, then they had to go back and put on inners. So they, they, that's why they were both laps down at the end of the race. You know, thing being in Silverstone, Stone, Silverstone. God, it was. I've never felt the love and the just joy for somebody to win a race that I felt then. Well, Lewis is the what is he? Twenty-time world champion, won six thousand races. <laughs> he, I mean, he's the king of Silverstone. He is uh, he's King won, Louis. He's won there more than any other driver. He's been knighted by the king or the queen or he somebody. He was knighted by the queen. All right. Um, not, not the king because, you know, the, it wasn't the king at that point. But what I'd love to say is there was genuine tears from Lewis in this race when he was hugging it. First, when he came across the finish line and he got the messages for the team, he, he choked up. And then when he was hugging his dad... Well, he didn't think he was ever going to win again. That's the whole thing. The Formula One is like that. If you end up in the wrong car, you're you're done. There's nothing you can do. There's, Fernando Alonso. Oh, poor Fernando. I he, he when he left Renault and went to McLaren, I knew that was like the beginning of the end for him. And then when he went to Ferrari, 
they were pretty good, but he just should have stuck around for a couple more years. He probably would have won the 2017 and 2016 World Championships. Well, he wouldn't have won 2016, but I think he would have won probably 2018, the one that Vettel kind of pooched away. But No, 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 no. Lewis, Vettel didn't do anything wrong. That was a team loss. Lewis was sublime. He passed George on track, which I knew. And I was, you know, sitting there with, with all the... And you owe me a dollar... We're sitting there with all the fans, and I was telling this one guy, I said, if it starts raining, Lewis is going to pass George, and he's going to be in the lead of this race. I mean, it was epic. Lewis passed George. Then Lando passed George. Then Lando passed Lewis. Then Oscar passed George, and Oscar passed Lewis. To be honest, if everything would have went right at McLaren, which we'll talk about later and we won't get into right now, Oscar was the one who should have won this race, not Lewis. It would have been Oscar and not Lando, because on those medium tires, Oscar had the pace. You could see it. I mean, that guy was flying. Yeah, they blew it, though. They blew it. They blew it. But we'll get to them. Also, what I want to say about Lewis is, could there be a better Hollywood story than this, Mike. I mean, they're filming, you know, the Brad Pitt movie. They were filming. They were doing some filming there. Yeah, I saw the trailer for it the other day. It looks bad. bad. Don't don't say that. Don't say that. They got new cameras. They're they're getting into the car places you've never seen before. Don't be negative. Don't be negative. It just looks totally hokey and corny. He's like, we're going to make, we're going to set the car up to go fast in the corners. Don't don't, don't be negative. Hey, look. look, Come on now. Don't don't, don't talk about Brad. Don't talk about Brad Pitt. Most racing movies suck balls. I just, I'm just, this is my prediction. Oh. I can predict whatever I want. This is oh, America you can, F1. You can, you can. Go and ahead. I'm sorry for all you Brad Pitt lovers out there. The movie's going to tank. It's just not going to, it's, it's not going to be good. Being reported, it's the most expensive movie ever made. Oh, shit. Already. <laughs> Already. I'm sorry. Sorry. King Lewis, back on the top step of the podium again. Well, I can't believe we've had two races in a row that were really good. It's like bizarre. Unbelievable. And they it's, both were won by Mercedes. Oh, that's right. George got George, George got won. that lucky win. But hey, there's there's two kinds of uh, win. And there's when you whoop the crap out of everyone and then you get lucky. And being lucky is way better than being good. Got to get lucky once in a while. I loved in the Max Verstappen podcast, you know, when they're sitting in the uh, cool down room and they're all talking. Like Lewis totally kind of doesn't talk to Max that much at all. He kind of... You know, snubs Who him. doesn't talk to what? Lewis. In, who in doesn't the talk cool to down. who? Max? Yeah, in the cool down room. Well, of course he hates Max. Because Max, like, took his thunder away. But what I loved in the post-race questions from the media, they pretty much asked Lewis all the questions. They asked Max two questions. They asked Lando two questions. And that was it for them. For that entire, like, 40 minutes, it was all Lewis. And you could see, first of all, the dejection on Lando's face, even on the podium. And I'll post it right here. Lewis is like this with the flag. You know, Max is standing up because he had a great race. Max had a great race. Max, if there was one more lap, it wouldn't have, it yeah. would have been. In, one more lap, Max would have won. Would have been race. his, like, what, how many races? When does he have now? Like 60 or 70 no, or something? I think he's up to 56, I think, or 57 Jesus, all right. already. Um, but Lando was totally dejected. He had his head down like this. And even in the press conference, he was like this. This is how he was doing the press conference. Who? Lando Norris. Lando was very upset. I haven't seen him like that in a long time. He 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 made the wrong call for the soft tires. He, he made that call. Am he I right? Should've, he should have went to the mediums, and so should have Lewis. Lewis should have went to the mediums because his tires wore off, and then Max caught him because Max was on the hards. I what? didn't think I thought Max was way too far back. I didn't think he was going to get that close. He was only a second and a half behind him. If there was one more lap, that would have been he would have come down the hangar straight on the last lap and passed him. So, well, you know what was that and Lewis could have been managing the tires too. I think so he was to the end. But you know what was interesting is before Lando came in and switched to the short, uh, soft, you know, soft tires, they had told him earlier, hey. We have a fresh set of mediums. You want to go mediums? And he said yes. Then when it came down to the pit stop, they said, Lewis is on softs. Max is on hards. Which do you prefer? Instead of giving him that choice that they had just talked about a couple laps earlier about the mediums. What do you, what, what, what went wrong there, Mike? Um, He wore the tires off the car. And he had a used set of softs. Those weren't brand new. 
Lewis had a set of brand new ones, but uh, they both should have went on to the mediums. And who was it? Was it Piastri was the fastest at the end of the race, right? Because he put the mediums on. Right. I mean, but, um, Carlos Sainz, I think, got the fastest That's why, that's the why um, yeah. Lando was so bummed out that, like, um, <clears throat> if he would have put the mediums on, he would have came in second and he would have gained on Max, but he didn't do that. And he made a boo-boo and, you know, the end. <sighs> McLaren's strategy was bad well one it wasn't bad they no, just no no that was they bad. just made the wrong just call they, that's all but it, it wasn't just once they made the wrong call oh they the sh- double stacking the, they, they should have double stacked or they should have covered max when he came in one of them should have came in and then the other one come in a lap later what they did is lando came in a lap after max came in and then oscar came in a lap two laps after lando came in and those tires were done well, yeah, but the, they we lost twenty seconds. They, okay, the double stack thing—I thought that was that was a mistake. But going to the softs wasn't a mistake. They didn't know what was. Good. There's no way to determine if if how, if that was the right call or the wrong call until after you did it. So right. So obviously, I, I going like, to the mediums would have been better. Because but, remember, Lewis went to the softs and won the race. So right. it really wasn't the wrong decision. But he wore the tires off the car trying to catch Lewis, and then Max caught him, and there's nothing he could do. Well, here's another thing. People have to know who they are. And we all know right now, at this moment, right now in history, Lewis Hamilton's the best on managing tires. He's the best. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So if he went on softs, you know your Lando, bro, come on, man. You can't manage tires like the GOAT. So maybe you should go on the mediums. And we got a fresh, Mike, we got a fresh set of mediums. It's not used, they're fresh. And the pace they had, they all started the race on the mediums. Well, the pace they had on the mediums was incredible. So why would you switch to the softs when the mediums were running so well? Because the track was still a little wet and the softs are a little better. That's mine. That's mine. What are you doing? Sorry. Um, this, like I said, the softs are better in, 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 in mixed conditions. And um, I, they, I don't think they made a mistake because it worked for Lewis. So it's like he won the race. They, they, they did what they did. Because when you're in the middle of a race, you make the decision, and then you have to live with it. That's all. It wasn't a mistake, though. I thought it the, was, I, the double stacking that was a mistake. That was a mistake. But the going to the soft tires was not a mistake. That was just a that was a, a race call, and it worked for Lewis, and it didn't work for Lando. But Lando still landed on the podium, so it's not. It wasn't the worst day he, he's ever had in his life. No, but it's and then these last three races, I would say starting in Canada. That Lando or Oscar should have won all three. Yeah, they have the best car, and well, it goes to another thing, another point I I like to make. It, it goes to all these people out there that say that you have to have the best car to win, because Lewis didn't have the best car, and he won. Lando's had the best car for the last three races, and he hasn't won. So it takes more than having the best. I hope you put that on, uh, like vibrate and don't have that ringing while we're doing a podcast. Uh, it also shows you that having the best car is not enough. You have to have good strategy. You have to have good race management. You have to make less mistakes than the those around you. But more importantly, at the moment when they say, "Do you want to go to softs or mediums or hards?" You got to be making the right decision on the fly while you have while you are racing while you are in the battle and i think lando kind of alluded to this in the cool down room like these are the things i think i need to work on because there's work to be done to make a champion and unfortunately lando norris is not ready yet well, not. Nah, I think he's ready. He just he be like I said. I don't think it was. I don't think they made a mistake. Let's move on from this. What's the next thing? Talk about Max and what a great he was. His first two stints, he was horrible, but he did a great. He, he he got off the line. Great. Okay, I have to make an announcement. Okay, go ahead, make it. Um, I know there's a lot of Verstappen fans out there that don't like me calling Max for stupid. It's a joke. But since you all are, are a bunch of crybabies and have a problem with this, I am going to retire for stupid today. I will call him Maxi or Verstappen. Yeah. Not Verstappen. That's my that's my uh, my announcement. Yeah. World news. Breaking news. Breaking news. And you know, I applaud you. Jazz for, clap. Jazz clap. Jazz clap. 
friendly hands for being a man about that because you know you don't want to alienate people oh i don't care um <laughs> yeah but i do you don't want to alienate people that listen to the show and are max fans and once you call them out of his name they turn off the channel and go to something else. well if you can't take a joke well that's not my problem max had a great race i think in the beginning oh, one more lap he would have won the race in the beginning he had no pace and he even said it you know i had no pace the car was a little slippery i didn't have the confidence in the car but once that's because the car doesn't work well in the wet because it's a stiff car that's this and to me and when you go into the wet you loosen the supposedly you loosen the rear suspension up so it's a little softer in the front suspension because it supposedly driving in the wet isn't as big of a deal as we think it is but um when they they have to soften the car up to make it go good in the wet and that car does not work well with a soft suspension on it so that's why i didn't do it that's and they made a lot they made a lot of really goofy decisions over the weekend like that car wasn't fast anywhere what did he qualify fourth or fifth or something i thought he yeah i thought he qualified did he qualify fourth i thought he qualified he might have qualified sixth anyways the the next race is going to be challenging for that car too because it's going to be the hungara ring which they didn't do well at Monaco. They're not going to. But the, when when they go to Monza, when they go to Imola, it's going to be lights out probably. And Adrian knew he well, was. They, at the, they've been to Imola already. That was earlier. What? In the year. They, they raced at Imola already. Oh, I'm think. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Zandorf. They um, they raced at Zandorf. What? Have, have, haven't they done the Zandorf? No, no, race? Zandorf is later. Okay. I might go to that race. We'll, we'll see what happens. What? Why not? Give me a break. You always say you're going to go somewhere. You don't go. I'm going to Vegas next month. You coming? I don't know. I don't have so any money left. <laughs> they spent all my money, man. Going he to has, he man. has four mouths to feed and then himself. He's last in line. If there's, if there's no food left in the house, I'm the guess, one who guess who doesn't get to eat? I'm the one who doesn't eat. Guess who has a job? And <laughs> I'm the one who brings home the bacon, but I... You don't get to eat I bacon. I don't get to eat it. Get to eat, get to eat feathers. I thought that Oscar Piastri... Is a badass. First of all, I want everybody to, to know this. When you're watching it live, you can see the big difference between the top cars, between Lewis, um, Lando, Max, Oscar, and I'm going to include George, of course, in that. Those five cars were in a league of their own, and then it was followed by Carlos Sainz, and then after Carlos Sainz, it, it was, oh, it was, it was it Hulkenberg. Was, Hulkenberg. Yeah, but it was... The Haas, the Haas came to life this weekend. It was, was quite a while before the other team. So then it would be Hulkenberg, uh, Stroll. <laughs> I can't believe I got And remember, they didn't copy the Red Bull. They copied the uh, the McLaren. The intakes and everything look like the McLaren, not the Red Bull. So it's like... Komatsu has done a fabulous job with that. Team. I don't know what he what he does over Unbelievable. there. Unbelievable. They gotta have because well, they don't have any money. They have and they only have like four hundred people working on that team. Another sixth place, unbelievable for. Do that you know how team. much money that gives that team for oh, next year? Man, and the sad thing about that is Hulkenberg's leaving. He probably doesn't want to leave now. What do you think, Mike? Oh hell no, he wants to go to the Audi team. They're going to be good. Yeah. Oh god, they're going to be they're there are. I mean, I'm sure they're already working on their engine. Now the crazy thing I've heard. Well, let me get back to Oscar. Oscar was the fastest man on track for quite a while. They screwed him when they well, left him they, out. They made a boo boo. They they were they thought they, they thought they were doing the right thing because they they were too close together, and that's that's probably why they did that. But they made a boo boo. But you know what they could have done is they McLaren could've... doesn't make a lot of boo boos. So what, what, what the last three races they have? So it's easier to win a race. A couple didn't they win a couple they, races? They won Miami, they, and the only reason they won Miami is because of the safety car. They wouldn't want Miami without the safety. Car. But that's racing, okay. though. But what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make, it's easy to make mistakes when you're in the midfield because no one's really paying that much attention. If you got the fastest car, you make some mistakes in the midfield, it just still gonna be the head of the midfield. But when you're trying to run and be in the front, you make mistakes. It's very noticeable. Red Bull, <laughs> Red Bull. For whatever people say about Red Bull... They don't make mistakes. They don't make mistakes. They bring upgrades to the car that always work. Their pit, pit stops are flawless. Their strategy has always been flawless all the way back to Vettel. I always said, if you could get Vettel's race engineer, whoever it was, you better go grab him because they never Oh, what is that guy's name mistakes. anyways? They were just on it. And they've continued Sebastian, that. Sebastian, box, box, box. 
They've continued that, and Red Bull, you can rarely say... The only person they made a mistake for oh, his, was his, Perez. His race engineer is an Indy car now somewhere. Right? Perez. They screwed Perez. Race. Mike. Oh, well, Perez, he, you know, I mean, he he went off in, in qualifying where like five or six people went off. He's the only one who ended up in the stuck in the kitty litter, so he's screwed. But, the you know, and anytime there's a wet track and any kind of wetness on the track and you're on a slick tire... I, I, everybody has made that mistake. Schumacher made mistakes in the wet, even though he was the Reaganmeister. Everybody makes mistakes in the wet. But that was like the ma- minorest mistake. And he just went, you know, because they're on such a nice edge. People don't comprehend how close to the edge all the, these guys are on every corner of every lap. So it's just, it was, and, and now, now the whole me, the whole stupid internet is blowing up about how uh, they're going to, uh, He's gonna he's gonna be out of the car in the next race when Charter's gonna Let's get the F out of here. They are just signed him to a two-year contract. They're gonna win the constructors championship and the drivers championship for the fourth year in a row. And then they're probably gonna win next year. So You know what's crazy? And this is a, a stat that I'm gonna pull out of my, my uh, leg here. Out of a leg? <laughs> Logan gonna come Sergeant, out. your okay. favorite driver, <laughs> has out qualified Checo six times this year. What? Yes. Okay. Logan Sargent, who hasn't out-qualified His Alex Albon ever. Ever? In, ever oh. in two years. Oh, no. He, he's not going to be in the car in the next race. It'll probably be Liam Liam. In, Liam in two Lawson. years, he's out-qualified Checo six times. But in this race, you know what Logan Sargent finished? Logan, where did he finish? 11th. He Dang, had a great he was race, one man. Point, one point from the one point from his first point of the year. Yeah, he had a great race. What I, about Albon? He Al, finished Al, eighth or ninth, right? Al, Albon finished tenth. He had a point. No, he finished ninth because uh, so Yuki, that's three Yuki points, finished. right? Yuki! Or two points. Yuki got a point. <laughs> yes, he did. Number what, baby? The Let's only, go, Yuki. The only reason Yuki Sonoda is in Formula One because he has good. a Honda engine. Because he's good. Yeah, all the, he's all, good. all the big teams. There's rumors about him going to Ferrari and Audi. Oh, Mike, and, why, do you, why do you have to? Yeah, down? he's gonna he's gonna be taking that new the Mercedes seat too. Why do you have to down Yuki like that? Come on, <laughs> he's not that good. You he's just, good. He has a nice hair. That's all you he's like beating, about him. He's beating Ricardo. S- not really, though. What do you mean, not really? He's trouncing him. Yeah, but he, how many wins does he have? Well, none. How many wins does Ricardo have? Uh, like eight. eight, seven. No, he has eight, seven. Is eight seven dollar 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 done? You already owe me a dollar from the the race. Yeah, well, you owe me four, so, that, so that's I three. Just minus one, that's three. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna get my, now I'm gonna be at you under two. You might get you might down to two. I doubt it though. Hold on, we gonna find but, out. Well, go ahead, get your phone. You can't even pick up your phone. Go ahead, look at your phone. Go on, go on, keep talking. So, when you're at the race at Silverstone, it rained. Silverstone. It was raining, then it was dry, and it was raining. I'll have to say that Saturday qualifying was miserable. They canceled a lot of what was going on. It was pushed back. You know, they canceled F2 qualify, F3. They canceled sprint race, and they pushed everything back. I have to say, for the amount of people that getting out of there, two dollars. You want me? I owe you two dollars now. That's oh, eight. You want eight? One oh, W okay. yeah, W baby eight. W Wu Tang forever. I would have to say that Silverstone, the track, is awesome. Now, the amenities at the circuit have a little uh, bit to de- be desired of. I think how everything's laid out is, is fine. But the mud, there's mud because there's a lot of dirt. And like there's this thing, and they call it pavement. <laughs> why, don't what? You, why don't they pave it over? I don't get it. I don't know how much it costs to pave it over, but after all the years that Silverstone's been in effect, that race, why don't they just pave it? Pave what? The, the, man, you're walking around like you want to go get a sandwich or a pizza oh, or something. It's dirt? There's mud everywhere, well, man. It used to be, a, it used to be a, an airplane. Uh, I don't care. That's like back in the 50s. We're no, talking the about 40s. now. All right, well, how, how many years is that? A long why time. Why can't we <laughs> get so you, pavement? Everywhere. Why can't there well, remember, be remember concrete? Sh- Silverst- and then there wouldn't be mud everywhere. Silverstone is owned by the uh, drivers, British drivers, something club. Okay. And they they determine and they're the ones who built that ridiculous the pit lane when they because the pit lane used to be on the other side right. of the track. And every and then they re redid. Here's the track. another thing I'm going to complain about. Oh, here we I'm go. I'm on it. 
So I'm sitting in the championships club, which is like kind of like a lower tiered uh, paddock club. There's no overhang to keep you out of the wet. So you pay <laughs> all this money. You could have paid money to just sit in the grandstand with an overhang, but there's no overhang. So we all know it rains in England. They would, should know that. And as an American, I know that. I'm like, well, how come there's no overhang? So I told all the people, why, why isn't there an overhang here? And they're like, uh, because that's up to the circuit. So the circuit does things cheaply because they're always trying to make money. But you have to make things so people are comfortable and want to come back. Can you stop dropping stuff on the ground? I mean, I mean, it's ridiculous. Don't open the window. We don't want to see that, that helicopter. The guy's out. An Ladies awesome. and gentlemen... This man just got up from the podcast to go to the window because there was a plane going overhead. So he wanted to go outside and look at what kind of plane it was right in the middle of... Hi, fans. Of, of, Recording. I mean, that's just that's just a professional. Excuse me, we would have started have this podcast like basis. forty minutes ago, but Sherman was on the phone with his boyfriend talking about something. Come on, come on, don't 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 talk about well, you what just I'm doing. Don't talk me. about my private stuff on phones. Okay, I wasn't talking. <laughs> my mom lost her wallet. Okay, what? Yes, and so I'm trying to get her her wallet back. Someone found it, so I have to. You have to go get it. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to go and get it. Well, know? that's why you're the you're the boss, though. Yeah. So. <laughs> Any conspiracy yeah. theories, uh, Mike, that you want to share? Oh, what, what was it? Oh, the Checo c- conspiracy theory. There is no Checo conspiracy theory. Checo just signed a two-year contract. He ain't going nowhere. But couldn't he go down to no. the sister team no. and bring somebody up and still keep the money that no. they're given? Why, why can't he? Because, first of all, that, that team gets who knows how much money the, uh, the Telmex pays Red Bull to be on that team. And they've won the Constructors and Drivers Championship every year he's been there. He ain't going nowhere. He's just in a funk right now. He's not in a funk. He, it was like uh, he has to qualify better, Mike. He well, has to that, that, better. that's a, but it's so close right now. It's very difficult to. It's with a tenth. Everybody, everybody's within a tenth of each other now. I mean, look at the look Logan at the, Sargent is out qualifying Checo in a Red Bull. Come on, man, that shouldn't happen. Come on, how do you how do you come on? What do you say to that? I don't say anything to it. I don't, I don't really pay much attention to it because there's how many races left in the season? A lot. Are we about halfway through? Yeah, we're about halfway through. Yeah, okay. He had a couple dud dud qualifying sessions. Big deal. Hulkenberg looked great. You know who looked great and needs to get a shout out? Unbelievable. Is Lance Stroll. The only thing I on the back straight, he would always go onto the curb. No one else did that. And it would make like a brrrr sound every time he did it. And he kept doing it. And I was like, why is he doing it? And no one else That sounds, is? That sounds like a, uh, he's hitting the rev limiter. No, he's hitting the curb oh. every time on a straight. So so what would happen is they'd come out on this back straight. They would take, they'd be on the outside. They'd drift into the inside. Then they'd go back onto the outside to take the turn. Now, most most of the top guys were doing that. But Lance stayed on the outside, and he clipped driving on the outside curb for just a bit every time, and then would go in. And I was wondering why he kept doing that, because I was like, that can't be the optimum time to do that, to keep doing it. And he kept doing it every lap, and he was the only guy doing it. But it's very confounding when you think about Lance Stroll. He's actually pretty good in the wet, man. He's good in the wet. He's good in mixed condition, which is usually what the better drivers are. But then when it's dry, he's dog crap. I don't get it. It's very confounding. But these last two he's races. He's not that good. These last two races, he's done better than Fernando. He's out qualified Fernando, and he's placed higher than Fernando. If his daddy didn't buy a Formula One team, he wouldn't be driving I anything. I hope that Lance Stroll, because I hope the best for all the drivers, I hope that Lance Stroll maybe found something these last two races. and it He keeps shouldn't it going. be in Formula One, the and, end. And it keeps it going. And that, the Aston Martin, I have no idea what's going on with Aston Martin. They've been sucking all, all this. Yeah, I since, thought they would make more for Ever since the, the, the halfway point last year when they started putting new junk on the car, they just haven't junk. been any, they've been completely... Um, uh, not where they were when they started uh, the 2023 campaign. They were on the podium like basically every race. Yeah. Um, it looked like they were going to win a race if Red Bull had an issue. Um, and Red Bull only had one issue that whole last year at Singapore, and they just dominated the rest of the year. And I'm just wondering what's going to go on with Red Bull. I mean, I don't know how much Adrian Newey has to do with the Red Bull team. 
But he did show up to the race the other day. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he was there for the actual Grand Prix, but he was in kit. He was in the uniform, and he was there. Well, two updates, two teams who brought updates that didn't work. It seems to be Aston Martin and Ferrari. Now, uh, Ferrari brought some more stuff? Ferrari, they went back to their spec for Imola because oh. the updates they brought to the car haven't worked. I mean, Carlos finished fifth, but there was no <clears throat> time in the race where you thought okay, he'd okay. be on the podium. Ferrari's, like, car, none at all. Ferrari's car is really good in the corners. It's not good on the straights. So that's where they're losing out. Because they don't have the, uh, the horsepower. That engine isn't as good as the Honda and the Mercedes. Um, but at, at, like in Monaco, they dominated, and they're going to probably do well at the uh, Hungaro ring. And then they're screwed because then they're going to go to Monza, and they're going to go to uh, Zandorf, and then they're going to go to all the other tracks, and they're going <clears> to, <throat> and then they're going to have to go to the Circuit of America where they're going to suck. Yeah, Baku, Baku, oh, Baku, ah, Baku, they might do okay in. Baku has the long straight. Mm-hmm. But most of that track is uh, twiddly a little bit, turns and it's hoopty. It's really it's just confounding. Ferrari confounds me because they're not only just because they're Ferrari, but the strategy is always just dodgy. I think. Oh, they're one of their technical directors leaving to Aston Martin next year, so that's why I'm starting to think that maybe Newey goes to um, Aston Martin. Because I don't think him and his wife want to live in Italy. Mm. But I could be wrong. I mean, it's like it's between those two teams. He's not going to Williams. That's a joke. He There's might. no way he's going to Williams. Yeah, he might. He might. No, 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 yeah, he no, might. No. But I, I just think it's strange that. Ferrari, we th- in the beginning of the season, they were up there. You know, we thought that they w- at at there was a point in time earlier in the season, maybe four races ago, where we thought that they might have a chance at the constructors' title because they were having two strong cars, they were doing well, they weren't screwing up the strategy. We were all talking about Ferrari, and then all of a sudden they brought updates to the car, and now one guy's. Makes the points and the other guy doesn't, and Leclerc's been in a they funk since Monaco. They don't it's make it strange. to the, they don't make it to Q three anymore. Yeah, it's strange. Well, like I said, you bring the wrong updates to the car. It goes all. When I started noticing this was the McLaren in twenty twelve. Mm. They were the best car. They brought yes. updates to the car, and it took them like five or six races to realize their updates sucked. And then they went back to the original car, and then they won most of the races at the end of the season. Yeah, but, but then by then it was too late. Up. You know, pit stops. Remember 2012, they should have won Lewis. Yeah. That's why he left. That's why he left. Yeah. And that's why he's leaving uh, uh, Mercedes now, because he's, he's had a piece of junk car for the last three years, and he still has a piece of junk car. That car, uh, it's gotten better, but... Well, it's not a piece of junk. Well, it's not... They should have stuck they with... They won that. two races in a row. It's they, not a piece they of junk. Should, no, they got lucky on one of those races. I don't care. They, I think both... They got to be there. You got to be in it to anyways, win Anyways, on flat out pace, they're still the third best car. Um, right now, give me, give me your, give me your top four in pace. Oh, it's you know Red Bull, uh, McLaren, Mercedes, then um, the red car. I'm gonna go McLaren, then Red Bull, then Mercedes, then the red car. Whatever. They're, the Red Bulls in the. What do you mean uh, whatever? Well, the Red Bulls in the uh, and the McLarens are real close, but I think I still think the Red Bull's faster. I just think they got it there uh, when their car in, in the wet mm-hmm. doesn't work that well. Because you saw at the end of the race, the the, the uh, Red Bull was the fastest car on the track. When you are competing in the front, everything has to go right. You can't just have the best car. You gotta have a good driver. You have to have good race feedback from the engineers. You have to have good pit stop. And you have to have good strategy. And all those things together make a championship or a constructor's championship. And we can see there's been times during the season that Mercedes' strategy has been pretty bad. No, yeah, Mercedes no. Wins. During this season, it's been pretty bad. There's been times during the season. Because in Canada, I thought, I thought George should have won that in Canada. But, okay? Because remember, he qualified. He, he should have won. Mm. He should have won. Didn't but it rain? Didn't. No, uh, man, I don't know if it. I can't remember now if it ran or not. But well, it doesn't that, matter. I, okay, I'm, guys should have won the race. They they made made some. I bad don't. Strategy the, the problem with the Mercedes that they're 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 having right now is the car's good in qualifying, but it it's not good on a long stint. Like well, it doesn't the have course. the race. Yeah, it doesn't have the race pace that the Red Bull has. The Red it Bull definitely ha- have the pace that the, the Red Bull has. definitely has the best race pace. 
and McLaren's like right there. They're they're real close. I just think the Red Bull's a little better, but they, it depends on the track they're going to go to. When they go to Hungary, the Red Bulls, if they finish on the podium, that's that's a W for them. Because I have a feeling it's going to be Ferrari one two. I want to tell like, Lando Norris. Don't beat yourself up like you're beating yourself up. Oh, of course up. he beat himself up. He's he... beating himself up. He's he's saying, you know, how, how they gave it away and they've gave, given away three victories. Man, sometimes there's a learning curve when you're up in the front. You're going to have to take some some beatings sometimes to, to get better and to learn from. So it's just like when you go to the Super Bowl. Just a lot of times the team doesn't win when they first get there. They're just bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And it takes some time to get used to it. So don't beat yourself up. Come back stronger. You know where you're weak. And it seems like to me he's kind of weak from watching. And the consistency when it counts when you know, you're in the battle, the heat of the battle, when his tires aren't lasting as long as, say, Max or Lewis or George. He's losing that little bit right there. And then also, I think when they ask him questions lately, he's been making the wrong decisions. Like, hey, you want to go to sauce mediums? And he picks one that's wrong. But that could be a crapshoot. But I noticed that when they ask Carlos Sainz, he's on it. When they ask Max, he's on it. When they ask Lewis, he's on it. And to a lesser extent, George Russell does make some really good calls over the radio, even though he whines a lot. Oh, no. Um, I still don't know what happened with One Point's car. They said it had some sort of water... Water pump issue. Pump issue. Strange. That does never break, but okay. It broke. <laughs> it broke at the, the end, but... Yeah, it broke. It was pretty... Uh, he must have been deflated. I mean, oh, yeah. You saw him walking. He got out of the car, didn't take his helmet off, went into the back, didn't throw his gloves. I mean, you, you qualify first at your home race. You're leading the race for quite a while. And then, I mean, but he got passed on track by Lewis. As soon as it started raining, I knew that was going to happen because Lewis is better than George in the wet, and so is Max. And I don't know if Lando's better than George in the wet, but I do know that the car is better. Well, all those guys from England are always good in the wet because they, they, they drive in the wet, and I think Lewis's dad did what a lot of dads do, is they don't give them, they, they let them go out in the cart, but they don't give them wet weather tires, and they make them learn how to drive with slicks in the wet. Mm. That's a that's a neat trick to do. Any give me a reaction when you're when you were watching the race, and they they really didn't show. We finally have a f- fight at the front, so they're really showing, you know, the first four or five guys in the front, which is great. First, you know, the cars in the front instead of showing the midfield or who the passes at the back. That's what they've usually been doing this season. But this season is kind of turning out pretty damn good, Mike. Oh, yeah, the last two races have been pretty good. The first few races were boring as snot. Uh, but I don't know. I want to see what the... Uh, we got good tracks coming up, especially Mons is coming up. Um, I'm not so sure. You know, I'm, the track at Zandorf is like, eh. Um, then we come to the Circuits of America. What about the Hungaro ring? You don't like the Hungaro No, nah, it's a hoopty track. It really? always has been. Yeah, it's just... It's a, they call it the, the, uh, the Monaco of uh, Hungary because it's like it's just a... It's a bunch of twiddly little bits. There's no real. It's not. It doesn't go anywhere. It's sort of a boring track. There's a couple sort of places where you can almost. You can only pass really on the front straightaway. That's it. And you really have to dive bomb whoever's in front of you. You can't just. It's not long enough to. I remember the uh, the uh, the Soviets built that track in the 80s. That was the first track. Oh, really? Yeah. And I didn't it, know that. They went there in 86 or 87 for the okay. first time, and the Hungary was behind the Iron Curtain. So. It was a, a, it's a Soviet track. It's the only one. Well, I want to talk a little bit before we go about my experience. And getting to Silverstone is, is quite the ordeal. There's, you catch the train, and then from the train, you catch a, a shuttle bus. But I. Oh, you have to take a bus from the, it doesn't yeah. drop you off at the track? No, in the, no, well, the bus dropped us off. Maybe a couple hundred yards from the gate. So that was good. And I want to commend all the people who were in doing the logistics for the buses because going there wasn't the greatest. But on the way out, when there was all those sea of people, they had consistent buses coming. And that queue, as they call it, we call it a line, but that queue moved really, really not only fast, 
but it you never stood in line for like 10 minutes without moving. And when I went to Suzuka and the buses were coming, we were in that line for an hour. We never even moved. Didn't you say the Emilo one was the worst? I mean, the well, Monza. Monza. Monza's the worst. Monza's the worst of getting out because the train, when you. And you couldn't get new. The train will just leave you. It just won't co- It won't stop at your stop. It, oh my God, it, really? people. So we were at, at Monza and we digress, but I, we're talking about it, so let's get into it. At Monza, there's a last stop. And then, you know, you have the second to last stop you can catch because that's where you can get off the track. So we were at the second to last stop and the train just kept driving right by. Never stopped. That sucks. Never stopped. And and then the last train was at 830. And we're like, man, if this train doesn't stop. You're screwed. How are we getting home? (laughs) You're walking. Because we're staying in Milan. So the last train, what did it do, Mike? It went by you. Yeah, it went by, man. And we're like. How'd you get back to uh, Milan? The only way we got back is some, you know, I was talking to my buddy, some other guy I heard, we're Americans, and he's like, hey, man, I called the uh, Uber like three hours ago. It's about to arrive in 10 minutes. You want to split it? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But without his help, we would have been uh, camping overnight in uh, Milan. I mean, in, in, in Monza. In Monza, and there's no, not that many hotels there, right? No, but, but it's just the You'd fact. You'd have been sitting in the train station all night. It's cold. Every time you go to one of these races, they've been doing all these, most of these races have been going on for 20, 30 years, and some even longer. The logistics, they should have it figured out. And I'll have to give it to the Silverstone Circuit and all the people that were involved in doing the buses that left the circuit. It was phenomenal. It, it worked. There wasn't a long wait. Of course, there was traffic once you got on the bus, but that's to be expected. I have to commend them because when every time it doesn't work, we have to say something about it. So in this instance, it worked. And I had it, me and my son who went to his first race. It was his 13th birthday. Yeah. We had a phenomenal time because it was a phenomenal race. And we want to thank everyone. And remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Like, subscribe, and comment below. And we are on Apple Music. We're on Spotify. We're on everything. We're on YouTube. We're on America Media. It's called on Instagram. Just give us a like, a follow. You know, make some comments, make some suggestions if you want. But thank you for tuning in for a wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold recap wait. of the British Grand Prix and Mike has something to say before I hit the button go ahead since Mike. Formula One's on summer break so are we we'll be no, back there's one yeah well there's one one race in two weeks right no three weeks it's at the end of the it's at the end of the it's three no, weeks it's the 19th yeah. I thought no, no the Hungarian wings the 19th get your phone out dollar I'm not, I'm not no no dollar dollar I, don't dollar? Know. I, don't I want know. my dollar back dollar no, I'm not it's betting. It's the 19th. You owe me. It's I only, only two I weeks only off. Two dollars now. Summer breaks after this one. I thought it's three weeks. No, it's 19th. Hold on, hold on. Uh, bu- 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 F1. Bu- 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 hold on. Oh, it's not. We're, everyone's watching the show. Everyone they like, can they use they the like phone. us. So this guy hold on. can't even use the phone. Hold on. Schedule. It's on the 21st. All oh, right. So, how many weeks is that? Three. That's two. What's really? today? What's the day? They're only having two. What's the day? What's the day? Hold on the ninth, I think. The ninth. All right, so that's two weeks. You owe me a dollar. No, I never said that. Thank you, everyone, for. I never said that. You're out of your mind. I don't. You know, I only recap. owe him two dollars now. I'm gonna get my money back. Keep on in American racing, money. It's big money. Uh, oh, that I hurt. thought you were gonna make more a uh, different theme music for this year. No, I like our theme I music. I like our theme music, but I thought you were going to make it different. Even, we don't even, I was thinking about it, but cool. Dave's so goddamn busy right now. Every Is time he? I get around, I'm like...